welcome to our special broadcast tonight of Behind the Playhouse Curtain. Uh, we have uh, such a awesome guest tonight. Uh, our production manager and technical director for the last three and a half, four years, uh, Dan Whiting is joining us. Dan has an incredible background uh, as an artistic director, technical director, um, production manager. Uh, he's done an, an incredible amount and brings uh, has brought summers and summers and summers, the last few summers, unbelievable experience to the Cape Playhouse and is really uh, the key to why all of our sets and designs look so amazing on the stage. And in fact, if you watched uh, our broadcast last week, uh, one of our designers, David Arselnot, was singing Dan's praises as to why everything looks so amazing at the Cape Playhouse. So uh, without further ado, let's welcome Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, thanks, Michael. That was really too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Checks in the mail. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, so, Dan, where where are you today? Where in the country are you? So I'm in Utah, which is where I'm from originally. And once things got a little crazy, I came back here just to be closer to family and friends. And, cool, cool, uh, cool. Yeah. Um, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Tonight is sort of all about how we design at the playhouse, how we create sets, the, our process. Um, and but before we get into your role as a technical director and production manager at the playhouse, um, let's just uh, talk a little bit about your background. You have such a you have a super multifaceted background. You've worn a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just a quick the quick elevator version of like how you um, grew up in the theater and like what your your background is, how like how you got to the playhouse basically. Sure. Uh, it's sort of a long winding story, I guess. But the short, the short version is I, I originally went to school for acting. I think like a lot of technical people might do. And I eventually switched to technical theater when I took some technical classes and really liked them and realized that's what I wanted to be doing. Yeah. Uh, from there in Utah, the theater community is smaller, so it's hard to make a living on theater. So I got involved in film, which has mm. more of a life here. So I did a lot of designing commercials. I went to school for design and it was working on those commercials that I got more into technical direction. And uh, then I actually eventually became the technical director at the university that I went to, Utah Valley University. And it was through a connection there that I found out about the Playhouse and eventually came over to the East Coast to work. So, um, yeah. And, and you, then, came to the, you came to the Playhouse for the first time in 2016, right? That would have been. Uh, uh, is that right? I mean, four summers. Yeah. So, so, the, so it actually would have been 2015, 15, 16, 17. Oh, you're right. 16, 17, 18, 19. 19. Yeah, yeah that's right. Right, right. And were you that in 16, were you hired? That that was the summer right when I was hired before that, or right after that summer. Yeah, so, I remember you being, being hired that summer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So were you the technical director that summer at, uh, or the production manager? I can't remember. I, well, I started as the technical director. I was right. only hired as the technical director. <laughs> and uh, then due to certain situations, I took both positions, uh, right. two shows in, and finished the season out as the technical director and production manager and sort of just kept doing that. So Wow. So you've done, you have been basically overseen 20, like oh, 24 shows at the Playhouse. That's incredible. Yeah. That's Six right. shows a summer. Yeah. Shows. yeah. So for our... Uh, patrons who may may not know what a technical director and a production manager does, how would you like summarize that in a few a few words for each of those? Because it's yeah. a class because you do both, but yeah, how would you describe what you do? So the um, the it, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. I, uh, sometimes I describe it to people as if you if you're building a house, the architect is sort of the person who designs the house, and then and then you hire a contractor to realize that design. So to hire like a general contractor and they'll subcontract whoever they need to, et cetera, uh, find all the materials. And that's kind of what a technical director is for theaters. So they take the designer's designs and then they break those down into buildable designs. And then they oversee the painters and the props mm -hmm. people and, uh, and all of the shop construction. So, and then the load in and all of that. So there's sort of, yeah. <laughs> So everything. <laughs> yeah. And then the production manager is actually yeah. the technical director's boss. Mm -hmm. uh, and the production manager oversees 
everything sort of outside of that as well. So sound, lights, costumes, yeah. and it's more of an administrative position. So they're more over budgets and uh, right. deadlines and stuff like that. And just making sure people have what they need. So right. yeah, more of a facilitator. Um, so at the Playhouse, I was overseeing all of those departments and then specifically managing the construction of this, the scenery. Great. So a architect or we'll call a designer is designing the set or the show at the playhouse. So someone like David Arsenault, who's done so many shows with us, designs the set, puts it on paper, sketches it. Um, and then what hands that hands that to you. And what's the process like for you once, once you have like the design from the, from the designer, how do you, how do you like make that come alive then? Right. I mean, first off, that's a super, that's super fun because you never really know what you're, going to get like mm -hmm. I might have some idea of what a show is going to look like but until the, the day that I open up the designs I don't know what I'm building so it's kind of fun yeah. it's different for every show um I mean to start with the first thing that we have to do is make sure that we can actually afford to build and have the time to to build whatever sure. designs are sent to us so the first step in the process is budgeting both time and money and most of the time we're actually over budget on those things because we want our designers to be creative. So then we come back with like, a, this is where we're at. What cuts are we going to make? What changes are we going to make? So then we go through the alteration period. Mm -hmm. And then once the design um, receives approval from the artistic director and the designer and the, the actual show director, we're happy with everything. Then, then we start construction and we start that on a computer, everything. We just take all the designs and start breaking them down into buildable units purchasing and ordering materials, um, drafting, build plans, and then those plans hit the shop and the shop starts building and painting mm. and eventually it ends up on stage. And what's like the timeline from the time you get to, you hand, you're handed those, like what the final approved um, drafts to like, then how quickly it's on the stage at the playhouse. Yeah, I mean, at the playhouse is sort of a, an an, a wild animal. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's this changes depending on where you're working, but yeah. ideally we're gonna get those designs a couple of weeks before we start building, mm -hmm. maybe like four weeks before we start building so we can start doing some planning. Uh, but it can sometimes be as little as two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all the planning, purchasing, drafting happens a couple of weeks before that we actually start building. And usually we start building two weeks before the show opens. Right. So we'll open a show, start construction the next day of the next show, build for two weeks, and then that show opens. Yeah. Right. It's very tight. And really, I don't think I've ever had to work on such an intense schedule anywhere. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the schedule at the Playhouse is basically, like mm -hmm. you were saying, like two weeks for, of rehearsal. And while the show is rehearsing, you're in turn building the set. Yeah. And then um, a two week run. And then while the show's running, then you're you're working on, you're building the next set. Um, that's quick. Yeah, no, no rest. It's pretty, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. We, we usually try to sneak a day off after one show opens before we start the next one. But it's pretty, yeah, I mean, you know, it's an intense yeah. thing. Yeah. A day off to sleep. Yeah, yeah. like finally do laundry because we have two weeks or three weeks of laundry built up. Right, 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 right. Um, and the tech process, when we do the technical rehearsals, like step us through that. Like, so one show comes down on Saturday night, right? So the curtain comes down at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Saturday night. And you guys are in there tearing the set down as soon as the curtain hits the floor, right? That's right. I mean, literally we wait for the curtain to close on closing night. And as soon as it's closed, we're on stage taking things apart. So we, we take all the scenery down from the last show. Mm -hmm. And then before we go to bed that night, we hang all, hang the lights and any sound, anything that has to go up in the air. So all the lighting and all the sound for the next show is up in the air. And then we go to bed, hopefully for a couple of hours, and then <laughs> we're back to, uh, to start loading in scenery. And uh, we spend the next day loading in scenery for about eight to 10 hours. And then after that, lights come in and start focusing on the set. Mm -hmm. And we, we've had rehearsals that night. So right. what, so we would strike Saturday night and we've had rehearsals on stage on Sunday nights. Wow. So it's pretty, yeah, pretty quick. So basically you have 24 hours mm -hmm. to get that whatever set is in the theater, out of the theater, the new set, most of it, like as much as possible into the space so that the actors then can start having their technical rehearsals that right. night. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, because that's the first time the actors have a chance to stand on stage. So it's and and the show opens in like two more days after that. So it's a pretty it's pretty important for us to get them on stage as quickly as possible. Sure. And the set by at that point isn't necess- isn't like a hundred percent finished by any means. We still have a day, day and a half to kind of finesse things, but sure. But hopefully it's ninety percent done by by the time the actors step on stage. Wow. Yeah. That's that's truly remarkable. Because like you're like in most at a regional theater, you may have a week to set up tech and and get yeah. you know, and you do it in you do it in twenty four hours. That's yeah. And you have like a hemp fly system, which is the, a fly system that's run by sandbags, which is what yeah. lo- raises and lowers the lights and the scenery. Um, do you find that to be, do you find like the quirks of the, the playhouse to be um, charming or uh, just making your job more difficult or, <laughs> or maybe oh, both? It's definitely both. We, I mean, I love the playhouse and I know the people that, that work there regularly also love it. And we love the fact that it's a little more challenging, you know, <laughs> the hem system is quirky and difficult to work with. And the, yeah, the, yeah I mean, the, the building is just so old and there's no such thing as a straight wall or anything like that. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty challenging, but we've, you know, we've learned to work with all of those things and we really, mm. we really like it. And it feels like a huge accomplishment when we can pull something off like that in that amount of time. It's very, very cool. Well, you've pulled off. I mean, the, one of the things that I would say that I'm I'm most proud of that has happened in the last few years of the playoffs is just the um, the production value and quality, and that's mm-hmm. a huge tip of the hat to you because um, you've you've made that that really happen. Do you have do you have any um, particular shows that you look back on now and you think uh, you're particularly memorable or that you really are proud of the design? Um, um, Anything, yeah, anything that like really stands out for you, like a, a show that you really, really loved? Yeah, I, and there's there are a lot of shows that I really loved. Mm-hmm. I really loved our Million Dollar Quartet. Yeah. Um, that was such a fun show, and I, mean, I think most people agree with me on that. Mm-hmm. I really loved our Little Shop of Horrors, mm-hmm. our South Pacific. I'm not just saying these because you directed them. <laughs> <laughs> Check um, <me> now. <laughs> the, the sets were just, I mean, they were challenging, and they looked really great. South Pacific. Ugh. went surprisingly well for as much as for as intense as that show was so many yeah. main pieces and moving yeah. pieces and i thought it was going to be so hard and it was yeah. but i mean tech went pretty well pretty smooth on that yeah i mean we had those massive towers that mm-hmm. would rotate that created the how the created plantation and then sort of like the generic like beach army look that had they were what like at least what do you think how tall were those like oh uh, uh, they all they cleared the proscenium right 20 feet. yeah they were yeah. 20 feet tall yeah they were very tall um some of the tallest moving scenery we've probably ever built yeah uh, and it it worked. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Um, we did. I, I really liked our even. I was. I had a very complicated relationship with our noises off. <laughs> it was so hard. But that set, I was so proud oh. of it. it was so great. Gorgeous uh, set. Yeah. yeah. It was so so hard, but very rewarding to see yeah. that happen. Um, and then there were just a lot of other sets that I thought were really beautiful. I loved yeah. our cabaret was incredible yeah yeah um, you know what i loved was um clue i thought you had clue. clue was gorgeous yeah clue was really cool and it was very unique the one of the hard things about clue was we have a hemp fly system and we had uh one section of music in that where we had like 23 fly moves within three minutes oh, so, right. yeah. yeah which was right. so intense it was really fun but we've never had to do anything like that and i was <laughs> i was actually ran the fly for that show and we had three other people no we at one point four people one of our crew members had to come up and help and we we it was so um choreographed like us mm-hmm. moving and running back and forth and flying things around each other it was pretty fun but it was pretty intense to do that all with just rope it may be interesting too for our patrons to realize that like every show that we have there that you build is built just for the Cape Playoffs. Like those sets um, are, uh, you build those just for the playoffs. Like once the show is over, the set is done, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we try to save parts of the set to be repurposed in other sets, but I mean, it's, it's 75%, 80% new build specifically for our stage every time yeah. yeah so it's 
it's a lot of work, but it's also, it, it sort of has to be that way because our theater is so unique. Right. Yeah. You have to, I would think, leverage like every second of time you have to, mm -hmm. you know, like I've seen you like you have like those nights when we're fl flipping over the sets, you have like people ready to go. Like we said, when the curtain comes down, uh, teams that are, you know, one team looks like they're, they're in charge of like getting the set down. The other team is bringing the new set in. Um, mm -hmm. You, yeah, you don't have time to like blink. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we, we focus the lights from the front of the stage to the back of the stage or hang the lights. Mm -hmm. So the battens come in and people are hanging lights on them. As soon as they move a little bit further upstage, the painters come in and start laying the floor. So they're putting the floor down right as, as fast as the electricians can move. Right. And in the middle of all of that, we have a couple of carpenters hanging and flying scenery at the same time. And, you know, we're, we're so much better at it. The first couple of shows we did, I think were so challenging because we, sure. we hadn't learned how to plan and organize properly. And we're still figuring that out. But I think we're able to pull off what we can because because we've figured out exactly how it all has to fit together in a couple of minutes. Right. Yeah, it goes a yeah, lot. I, I would assume like after four years, you have it down to a pretty good science and you do, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have less problems. I always, there were, oh man, so many nightmares of moving scenery on stage and it not fitting, <laughs> like hitting the catwalk or something yeah. like that because yeah. it wasn't on the original plans or yeah. it was added later or whatever the cat, like the catwalks I don't think were not all of them anyway, were part of the original constructions. So they were not yeah. the original draft. So we've we've sort of got around all that now. So yeah. We figured it out, but there were a Do lot have, of times where scenery just didn't fit. Oh. Do you have any any uh like particularly memorable challenges like that? Like you have this a huge piece of scenery and you realize, oh my God, it's not going to fit around this corner or it's not going to like any like like particular memories of that? Yeah, that actually happened i think was it with south pacific we had to like cut some walls cut the tops off of walls hopefully you didn't even know about it <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were on stage right because there were sort of it was like legs a series of legs over there and they did not fit around the fly oh, wow. um, yeah we had to cut those but everything else went so smooth that that wasn't so bad like we were able to get around it but yeah oh, oh you know what gypsy also the same thing over on that side there was a fake a fake fly like a fake pin rail because it was oh, yeah. theater right and that did not fit how it was supposed to i remember you helping us put that up because we i remember to, that yeah <laughs> yeah, that was yeah tough we had to I like, love that design too that was a beautiful yeah. gypsy was yeah. gorgeous yeah really beautiful um so you've been at the playoffs for four years. You must, there, and you, I mean, it's obviously a very challenging schedule doing six shows in 12 weeks, but there must be part of it that you really love that, that brings you back every year or um, that, that makes you want to return. Yeah. The play, I mean, the theater is amazing. It's awesome. It has so much history there and it's incredible to have felt some ownership over it for a couple of years. You know, sure. it's, it's been wonderful. It's, I love as, as many issues as it has, I just love it. It feels like it feels like a person with a person with a great personality, a quirky personality. Uh -huh. um, and I've worked in just new perfect theaters, and they just feel like you know soldiers. You know, I don't know. They feel so like fine and perfect, and that that's super nice sometimes. But I don't know. I like the personality. I like that the walls shake when the wind blows. You know, I like <laughs> I like that stuff. Uh, but also, over the years, we've just put together such an incredible team. Yeah. Yeah, a huge part of coming back is the, the people that work at the Playhouse. Yeah, it's an incredible place. The designers that we see year after year, and the directors, and it's yeah. awesome. It feels like uh, the last time I went, um, 2019, when I showed up, I just felt like I went, I got home. Mm -hmm. know, like I'd been away from home, and that was sort of a weird thing to feel when I was traveling so far from home. Mm -hmm. I that feeling, so it was nice. Yeah. Well, we uh, sincerely hope that we have you back this summer. <laughs> and yeah, I hope it's possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. It was it was great to be able to uh, chat with you today and give everybody a little background on um, 
uh, on what you do and how you make things happen. And you, I really mean it when I say you've been absolutely instrumental in this massive amount of production growth that we've seen over the last few years. And you and your team have, have created some truly remarkable, beautiful things inside the theater. And we're, we're very fortunate to have you. So, um, hopefully, hopefully we are, we're all good to go when we're back this summer. Oh yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. We're, I'm, we're really hopeful too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. All right. Take care. Well, thank you for joining us tonight for Behind the Playhouse Curtain. I hope you enjoyed our behind the scenes look at how we create uh, our sets at the Cape Playhouse. And please join us next week for another episode. Until then, from all of us at the Cape Playhouse, we wish you a very happy and healthy week. Take care.